talk about the most important subject in your uh, middle school, in your high school, uh, which is English program, right? Um, so to, we're, we're going to be uh, uh, trying to speak in uh, both English and, and Mandarin Chinese. Um, Daniel will be mostly speaking English and uh, I'll be doing some kind of a translation so that, you know, basically we're bilingual for, for tonight. Um, let me, uh, let me say something in Chinese first. <coughs> 今天晚上我们, 我们讲我们的, 呃, 我们在很多很多场合都重复的这个三番五次的这个不厌其烦的跟大家讲,就是英文可能是你在中学阶段,不管是初中还是高中, 最重要的一个一个subject 那除除了除了法语或者除了其他的第二第二语言之外，就是我们的教学，我们的课堂教学，我们的我们的所有的作业跟老师跟同学的所有这些沟通都是靠英语完成。所以它不仅仅是一个科目，它啊同时是一个这
同时他在他的学校里面啊，负责非常多的刚才我们讲的这种教学教研的工作<咳>，就是我们的教学内容的大纲啊等等，包括我们的 lesson plan 的研发工作。所以今天最主要的是由啊 Daniel 给大家介绍。我们的新的英语的 curriculum， 新的英语的 lesson plan 的研发啊、呃，包括整体的架构和里面的一些一些具体内容，好吗？啊、呃、，Daniel 主要是他讲英文啊，呃，因为他的他基本不太能讲中文，但是我会请 Daniel 呢，呃 ，Daniel， 呃 ，maybe every 呃、uh, every two slides you can take a pause and then I'll do some、uh, Chinese translation. Okay. Okay. Um. Thank、right. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel.、Uh, without further ado,、um, I'm gonna turn the podium to Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Thank you.、Um, hopefully, you can all hear me.、Um, thank you, Henry, for that、uh, introduction.、Um, and same thing. Like, thank you for taking time out of your your busy weekend to come join us here to to just learn more about our curriculum and kind of our approach here. Um, so yeah, just welcome once again. Um, so um, thank you, Henry, for that really great introduction. Um, just yeah, just a little bit more maybe about me, like who, like what do I do? What what am I doing, right?、Um, so yeah, I'm still a teacher here、um, in Ontario.、Um, I have experience with like IB、um, schools as well,、um, and through my different、um, experiences, I've I've also had an opportunity to、uh, become like curriculum advisors or to work with curriculum or developing curriculum and training teachers、uh, within my my schools. Um, so that's something、um, that I have experience with.、Um, so I'm really grateful for this opportunity where I get, also get to do that、um, here at Linky as well.、Um, so、um, maybe let's just go back through my agenda really quickly here. So、um, I want to cover these topics with、um, with all of you maybe in the in the next、um, in our next time together. So there's a couple of maybe things that we we want to go through. So、um, first of all, like why enrichment?、Um, why might you want to send? Um, you know your child to maybe extra lessons and so forth,、uh, and then br briefly I want to maybe talk about our approach towards curriculum and、uh, maybe our goals、um, as well and how we approach like education specifically、um, English proficiency, and then we will、uh, we'll talk briefly about maybe the resources that we've chosen to use and maybe like a brief rationale. And then we'll also save some time at the end for、um, so, you know, any like Q and A, right? For some questions that you might have, right? So that's gonna briefly take us、um, maybe for our next、uh, bit or bit or so. Okay, so I'm gonna skip through the introduction again. Sorry about that. So maybe like、um, some of you might have this question, right? Like why you know why additional classes, right?、Um, like my my son or daughter goes to、um, school already. You know, there's English classes there and. and, and Why, right? Why additional classes?、Um, now, there's many reasons um, why, um, but I'm not going to go through them all. But here are some main ones, from, just from my professional experience of what I've heard from、um, from parents. But also,、um, this comes from my own experience within the education system. So the first one would be、um, a desire to be challenged, right?、Um, I believe, like each student, each child,、um, desires to be challenged.、Um, At their level, right?、Um, and English is no different.、Um, and of course, I'm speaking about general education here. So this would be made towards maybe like public education.、Um, I believe it's well intentioned, right? And it, of course, it varies from school to school, right?、Um, but there's a common theme of just a lack of resources、um, to challenge each student adequately, right? Um, there's there's a lot of factors within this, whether it be funding or just limited time with the teacher, right?、Um, so additional classes, right, kind of addresses this need for a challenge, right? We all want to move on at、um, our own pace, right? At this, at, maybe at the level that we're currently at.、Um, and then, of course, the second one would be like addressing any specific goals, right?、Um, I included、um, kind of a, 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 an image on the bottom of the slide. Um, so for me, for example,、um, each time I start a unit with with a class or、um, with a lesson, when we're introducing a new topic,、um, I always engage my students into developing like a smart goal, right? So like specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and, and time based. Because、um, as educators, right, as teachers, we always want to be able to,、um, you know, take the curriculum. So taking whatever language lesson or English lesson that we have, but we want to make it 
um, accessible, right? We want to make it um, specific for that student, right? And, and I believe all the educators want to do this. Um, and of course, small class sizes at Linky kind of allows for this to be more of a possibility where we take our curriculum. Um, we won't be making a new curriculum for each child though, but we can tailor it to their approaches, right? And to maybe what they uh, want out of this, right? Um, and so our small class sizes and our just being able to do this is, is also, once again, an advantage as well. Um, our third one is kind of, um, it's an obvious one, but of course there's a competitive advantage, right? Whether we like it or not, at the end of the day, um, when, you know, when students are applying for specific schools or um, specific university, right? At the end of the day, it comes down to competition, right? Um, they will be comp competing with their peers um, around them, right? Around similar age. And so, of course, we want to have a competitive advantage, right? Of course, and that is also very important as well. Um, the last one um, kind of hits home as well. And this comes from just my own experience being with trained teachers and kind of see where um, education is headed towards. Um, but structured repetition is key. And this is something that um, I believe is slowly making its way back. Um, but in terms of public education, a lot of the rote memory or repetition is kind of done with or gone, right? And what this leaves us with, right, is this gap, right? Students are introduced to a topic but they are providing enough opportunities to actually um, practice um, in different contexts, of course, we're not just memorizing for memorizing sake, um, but to have structured repetition um, in order to retain it well, right? In order to solidify these foundational concepts, right? And so these additional classes provide um, this as well. Um, we can go on a deeper, maybe if you wanna ask later at the end, but there's a lot of research that talks about like spaced, like repetition right, and how it actually aids a lot of retention, which is kind of missing in our, in our education system right now, right? So these additional classes provides for that. Um, and so maybe I'll, I'll take a pause here for a moment if... Sure, yeah, Daniel, uh, can you maybe uh, dial back to the um, um, self-introduction page? Sure. Okay, great. Well, what I... 给大家快速用中文很快速的过一下 其实Daniel刚才我们提到他是他现在的这个全人制学校的教研组负责人，就是他主要是负责学校整个的教教研工作。那在这个支脉，他还做很多去呃training其他的老师，就是他做这种更多的给其他老师做做培训的工作。啊
一下子就过多过多了一堆事儿，所以这是这是一个很我们经常会会碰到的一个情况。另外一个就是说，当你真正去申请大学的时候，那刚才我们讲到了英语，实际上是所有的大学所有的专业里面都一定是要求的啊。如果大家有兴趣，我建议你们去去查一下。今天其实我上次讲座的时候给大家看了，就是说，比如说啊，世界的这种呃、啊、顶。顶级的这些啊大学啊，就是最新 U.S 排名啊，第一名哈佛，第二名第二名 MIT， 第三名啊，就是这个这个斯坦福。你去查一下，比如说哈佛，你 Google 一下，哈佛 Harvard， 呃，这个 Undergraduate 就是我们所谓本科 ，Harvard Undergraduate High School Course Requirement。你去呃 Google 一下刚才我说的这几个字，它会给你给你这个显示出来，就哈佛的官官网上。对高中选课的要求啊，或者你把哈佛替代成，比如说滑铁卢，呃，滑铁卢的 CS， 或者什么什么 McMaster Health Science 都可以。你替代完之后，然后你看他的 High School Course Requirement， 就是每一个大学或者每一个专业，其实对你高中的选课都是要有要求，有哪些课你是需要选。这里面有一个共同的一点，就是不管你是哪个大学，你什么专业，英语。通常来讲是 English for you， 就是我们十二年级的那个那个课程啊，那个呃课程代码是 E N G for you， 这门课一定都是被要求的，所以啊、呃，这个是从从大学招生的角度来讲，他希望看到你有有一个非常高英文的英文，另外一个错了，就是说你在呃大学申请过程当中，你的面试、你的写作，其实这些都是英文。另外一个，丹尼尔也讲到了你的 competitive advantage。competitive advantage 其实刚才我也说到了，就是能够让你在众多的这种竞争当中，你你可以脱颖而出，你可以做到这种差异化，你可以做到这种跟其他人不一样。英语是一个非常好的能够展现你差异化的地方，尤其针对我们华裔的学生，因为通常我们的华裔学生，我们的呃。这种理工类的科目都比较强，我们整体的这种学术分数一般都比较高，但是英文通常来讲，不是我们的个别奇的地方。但是如果英文表现出，不管是课内成绩也好，还是你的写作水平也好，还是你的 public speaking 也好，能够展现出一个非常好的英文的能力的话，这个是你的一个很重要的一个差异化啊，很重要的一个竞争的一个优势。那另外一个，最后一点。就是你在 l i n k e 来呃做这种呃更多的英文学习，因为我们的课程，因为我们的这种呃以 Daniel 为<咳>负责的我们的专业的这种英文的呃课程的这种研发团队、课程的团队，所以我们的小很小的班级可以更多的给孩子们做到一些定制化的教学，一些定制化的方法啊。OK， Daniel， back to you。OK， thank you， Henry。Um, okay, so I'll continue here.、Um, so the next part is going to be kind of our approach. So kind of like,、um, well, once once we you know we want to take extra classes, right? Like why why Blinky, right? And so in this next section, kind of will tell us, kind of、uh, tell you kind of our approach as to maybe our distinctives as well and kind of our approach towards education,、um, especially for English here. So. Um, first of all,、um, our focus is on enrichment, right? I, I like this word enrichment because、um, we are working in tandem with the Ontario curriculum.、Um, we're not doing our own separate thing here.、Um, our goal is to enrich, right?、Um, it's not to replace,、um, you know, day school or, or public education, whatnot, right? Our goal is to help make it make the experience better, right? Our goal is to make make sure to whatever they're learning that、um, they will be either encountering in the future, or that we could of course solidify concepts, right? So that's enrichment.、Um, maybe just to show you, so I pulled this one. This is a screenshot from、um, one of our actually first lessons from our、um, grade eight curriculum.、Um, I'll be sharing this with you maybe later on,、um, but just to tell you, like,、um, there's a lot of、uh, education maybe jargon here,、um, but we are. Aligning ourselves with the Ontario curriculum, which、um, some education centers may not do, right?、Um, so, with within each of our lessons, there is a clear connection towards、um, what they're getting from us, 
um, in terms of language. Here's a, this is the English curriculum. And of course, what they will be encountering in school, right? So we're using the same uh, curriculum as our framework. Um, I'm not going to go through all the points there um, because that's just maybe education jargon. But if you want to learn more about um, what this is, I put a link at the bottom. Maybe if you want to take a screenshot or a picture, uh, I, I'm sure this Zoom, um, this, this meeting is also being recorded. So you can go there as well. Um, so you can also check it out for yourself um, as to, of course, this is what um, every child will be going through in Ontario. Uh, but as Linky will be following me as well. Um, one of the differences here, though, um, is where our goal is for one year ahead, right? That's our enrichment, right? Um, so, for example, this is our grade eight. Uh, this is just the first lesson, just part of it um, in terms of what will be covered um, in our first lesson uh, based on the grade nine curriculum, right? So for grade eight, we'll be using grade nine as a grade nine, uh, the expectations as a framework. Same thing for, for example, grade seven, we'll be using grade eight expectations as a framework as well. So that's part of our enrichment. Um, so um, maybe a couple more points about enrichment here. So I mentioned the uh, year ahead. Um, of course, um, there's several advantages for this as well, right? Um, so especially for language, for English, since it's more, uh, it's skills based, right? Um, it's not just content, but we're practicing our skills and proficiency. So whether that be writing, reading, speaking, uh, and so forth, right? Um, a year ahead is great because of course we could be introducing, um, the, the content or introducing the expectation this year, right? And so when they finally get it, for example, the following year, right? They're already primed, right? Students have the background context, right? To understand further, right? Um, for example, um, if we previously are encountering a new topic, right? And then we learn it again, right? Um, we're able to build better connections, right? And of course, then we get to solidify um, our understanding of it better, right? So a year ahead enrichment kind of helps fulfill this along with other um, advantages to that as well, right? For example, like competitiveness. Um, we are aligned to our interior curriculum, as said before, right? So we're not um, pulling this from another place, right? Um, it does build and solidify foundational concepts. And that lends to the last point here. Um, with this English curriculum, we, there's, of course, there's content, right? Content is, is of course, important. Um, but I would say skills um, is equally or actually even more important than the content itself. And so within our lessons, we try to build transferable skills, right? Um, well, of course, English proficiency itself, it's a skill, but for example, even being able to critically read or analyze a text, right? Um, not just based on the content, but the skill itself, right? Um, and so for example, they might encounter a specific test, text with us in link key, right? Maybe we're reading like um, a Shakespeare text, like Roman Julia, but they may not encounter the specific text in their own high school, right? So for example, in grade nine, there's like two or three other texts that they potentially could read. Um, and so that's why our focus on transferable skills lends really uh, well to this, where we really want to ensure that um, our students are equipped with the skills to apply their knowledge in different contexts, right? And of course, that's also a real life skill as well, right? It's not just like I'm learning for school's sake, but I have to be able to use it. So. Um, one key thing, uh, key aspect of kind of our approach is really a focus on skills and developing uh, their skills as they kind of move on with us in this curriculum. Um, maybe I'll pause here for a moment. All right. So, Daniel, can you about five minutes? Um, one more, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, one. Yeah. 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 That's the one. Okay. Um, I show you, 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 要去跟教育部的大纲要去协调，因为最重要的一个指标，实际上是我们帮助学生，呃，第一，提高他的整体的英文的水平；第二，实际上要在校内能拿到一个非常棒的一个英文成绩。啊，所以我们一定要去协调
，但是我们是是在他的基础上，我们要去真正的是扩展，我们要真正的去。把孩子们的这种英文的真正的这种水平、真正的这种能力，把它提到提到高一个这个更高的一个一个一个程度上啊。啊、uh, ，Next slide。呀，这个地方就是安省的 curriculum。我们谈到 curriculum 的时候，其实它更多的是一个叫 expectations。嗯，这什么意思？就是说。我期望你，你比如说你是安省的九年级的学生哈，那教育部的大纲是说，我期望你九年级你应该达到什么样的程度啊？那这个里面给大家看一下，你比如说 B2 就是 Language Foundational Reading and Writing， 那你九年级应该达到在啊阅读和写作方面应该达到什么样的程度啊？在 Knowledge 方面你应该达到什么程度？在 Critical Thinking 方面你应该达到什么程度？这个是他的一个。一个期望，或者不说，它是一个对。如果你是安省的学生，你九年级，这个是你应该达到的一个目标。那我们的整个的大纲的设计，我们的教学方案的设计，一定要去跟他去协调。但是这里面有一个非常重要的一点，是我们实际上是提前一年。什么叫提前一年？就是说，如果你的小孩现在是七年级，你来上另辟的七年级的英文。我们实际上用的是安省的八年级的大纲要求。我再说一遍啊，这个非常重要啊，就是我们要我们要 one year ahead， 我们的 enrich 就是我们要扩展，我们要把孩子们的能力给加高加厚，是提前一年的扩展啊。如果你是七年级的孩子，那你你到我们这儿来，我们给你用的所有的大纲、所有的内容、所有的教学计划。实际上是基于安省对八年级学生的要求啊。如果你九年级，那你来到我们这儿，我们给你的所有的东西、所有的内容是基于安省对十年级的要求啊。所以是 one year ahead。OK， Daniel， what the next slide？ OK， 所以那这个是我们至少是 one year ahead。有的时候甚至我们可能会超过一年啊。那为什么要这样做？有很多很多。好处，第一个就是能够确保你在课内的这种学习更加游刃有余。刚才我们讲到了，孩子们从九呃八年级升到九年级的时候，当他到 literature 的时候，尤其啊里面加进去像莎士比亚、Shakespeare 这些内容的时候，很多孩子是不适应，所以英语成绩的下滑，然后写作、阅读的这些这些呃对他们来说的这种挑战啊，那我们就让他们更好的能够把他自把。这些内容准备好，这就变成我们要提前一年，或者说有有的时候我们可能会比一年更多，提前会更多。啊，另外一个就是我们实际上是跟安省的这种呃、啊、大纲的这种期望，实际上是我们是跟他协调一致，只不过我们的内容比他更深，我们的内容比他更广，我们的内容比他难度更大啊。呃、啊、s o l i d i f i e s fundamental concepts。就是我们的这些英语的一些基础能力，比如说词汇、语法、这个阅读，然后包括我们的这种文学分析啊，尤其到了九年级之后，真正的 literature analysis 这些文学分析啊，非常非常重要，对很多孩子来说也是也是很容易在这个地方呃会会被挑战的地方，就是他不适应，他以前没有接触过。那 transferable skills 这个其实我们刚才已经讲过很多。就是你这个英文的能力，它不仅仅是一门科目，它是实际上是一个跨跨科目、跨领域的一个一个基础啊，就是你的啊 reading 也好，这个词汇也好，写作也好啊。昨天上午是我们一年这个这个很重要的一个 SAT 的考试，因为大家都知道，如果你将来要申请像哈佛、耶鲁这种这种藤校啊，常春藤这些美国学校，你要考 SAT。啊，疫情期间被停了，那现在呢？基本上最近这从去年开始，慢慢各个大学都恢复，就是 SAT 是 required， 你必须要考 SAT。如果你想申请美国这些头部大学的话，所以昨天上午是啊，顺便说一句啊 ，SAT 考试八月底这次考试是考试参加考试人最多的一次，因为大家利用暑假准备备考，所以昨天上午就是八月二十四号上午这个 SAT 的考试。呃，考完之后，我们听到很多学生反映说
阅读部分很难，阅读阅读分两部分，这个 Module One、Module Two。Module One 相对简单 ，Module Two 很多孩子讲很难。那像这种的，其实是你平常的功课。像 s c t 这种考试，它是水平考试，就是你想在考试之前临阵磨枪磨两下，然后就就能呃冲上去，然后能考一个很好好成绩，不容易，因为英语这种。他这些 fundamental 的东西，刚才我们 Daniel 讲的这些这些能力，他是需要你一些需要你一些时间来去慢慢的去 build up， 啊，很难是说我临临阵的时候我我冲刺一下，我晚上熬两个夜我就能把 s a t 的考下来，这个几乎不太可能，所以大家要早一点做准备啊，也就是说你像 s a t 这样这么重要的考试，你如果前面的这些。基础能力、fundamental 这些东西全部打好的话，那你上去之后，像我们以前都很有经验，就是说我们的英语的学生、我们的底背的 MUN 的学生，语言能力非常强。他们背考 SAT， 基本上稍微的把题型熟悉一下，上去之后基本上就是1 5五百、一千五百五、一千五百以上的分数。那如果你平常基础能力不够的话，你背考会很吃力，而且最后可能分数也不一定。这个很理想啊，所以这个大家一定要知道，就是说它不仅仅是一个科目了、啊，除了你在校成绩当然非常重要，但是所有这些包括 s a t 包括我们现在说的什么以后的文书写作、面试等等这些，其实都是有平常功课。OK， back to you, Daniel. Okay, thank you, Henry. Um, okay, so um, now moving on, um, we want to continue with our approach. Um, now. I just want to use this kind of image to kind of um, kind of wrap up um, this transferable skills. So, um, in as teachers, we we often use this term called scaffolding, but this is just a term about how can we um, meet every single sp specific child's needs. Um, of course, in a classroom or or within a place, right? And of course, this uh, our approach once again is. Especially for English, since um, it's skills, and each student, each person that kind of walks into our our classroom comes with, of course, a different set of um, skills, right? A different level of proficiency, right? Um, and of course, with our um, smaller class sizes, we are able to, of course, meet them, right? As, as hopefully meet them as where they are currently at, and to, of course, elevate their skills um, to progress, right? So. It doesn't matter what level they are from or they currently are at. Right? Our goal is to, of course, take that, and of course, of course, and then enhance them. Right. So, just really want to use this picture to kind of solidify that. Um, so, how can we do this? Right. So, um, when designing our curriculum, right, we want to be able to enrich. We want to be able to guide um, each student to, of course, to like as, as Henry mentioned, like like analysis, since it's such a difficult skill, right? Um, but how, right? And so when designed the curriculum, and this is um, a learning objective, once again, from our first um, grade eight lesson, um, just as an example for you. Um, um, when I'm designing the curriculum here, I'm using um, Bloom's taxonomy. So this is from uh, an educational psychology kind of a researcher, Benjamin Bloom. But um, we, there's a different scheme. I'm going to show you an image maybe after this to kind of help you under, maybe understand if this is new for you. Um, but we, at every lesson, we have, um, in, in addition to maybe our interior uh, expectations, in every single lesson, we have specific goals to attain, right? And that's how we measure our, uh, whether, well, do students get it or student, do students not get it, right? But this is kind of our focus point. And so the highlight part, right? So for example, this is our um, one of our lessons, the very first lesson actually for grade eight, right? Uh, first one is to be able to, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to restate and paraphrase um, really wise book eight, lesson one vocabulary. And they should also be able to describe and apply um, the three quests of reading, third series to the short story, dark they were but golden night, right? Um, it's okay for, about the, the sentence, it, it, it doesn't matter about that part, but here we want to just focus on um, the action words, right? So the restate, paraphrase, describe, and apply. Um, maybe I'll show you the next slide, and I can come back to this one, and, and hopefully it'll all make sense. Um, so within education, of course, it's, it's also um, a learning science as well, right? Um, we always want to, as 
um, we mentioned before, like a transferable skills, or how can we enrich and guide students and to facilitate kind of this development in their skills. And so we want to be focusing off whenever we want to introduce a new topic or new concept or a new way of doing something, right? Um, we always start with maybe at the bottom part, right? So like remembering, just understanding the content, right? And then hopefully as they solidify that foundation, we can build on to that, right? Now we can build on maybe for more or less applying it. Can you uh, apply to different contexts? Um, maybe, for example, if we use worthy wise, like vocabulary, right? Maybe the first time is remembering it, just being able to recall the words, right? Maybe the, the next level, then we can further maybe understand the context, right? Under what context or situation can we use these words, right? Um, applying could be like, can we apply to any other context besides your classroom? And then maybe analyzing um, with each word, maybe there's specific connotations or associations and so forth. And of course, the list goes on, right? Um, and, and so maybe I'll go back to the previous slide really quickly here. So how we plan our lessons and in our approaches, when we introduce something, we obviously want to maybe start off uh, more foundational, right? Um, and so the words such as restating, paraphrasing, these things belong in the maybe the more foundational stage or maybe remembering, understanding, right? And so we want to ensure that students do have that foundation um, and that it, it, it's a solid one, right? And then like once, once they've mastered that, right, we can move on to maybe the other skill sets, right? So for example, um, for, for example, this is in grade eight. So we would assume that from grades five, six, and seven, they should be able to have some knowledge of the three quests of reading literature, right? And so in the grade eight level, we want to build onto that, right? So describing, right? This will be more of an application, right? And of course, nearing the end of our uh, overall, let's say a fall semester. Um, so for September will be more of um, remembering, understanding, applying. And our goal is at the end of a fall semester and at the end of June with the all the 32 classes, um, we'll begin to, of course, be um, using the analysis, the evaluating, the creating part, right? So this is kind of our approach as to, well, how can we facilitate and cut the growth of these skills, right? Um, and so we'll be using, and I'll go back to the image, um, we'll be really following kind of um, best practices, right? The current research in guiding our designing curriculum um, so that hopefully that it is not about maybe if, but like when they could approach like evaluating and of course creating. Um, maybe I'll pause there quickly as well. Okay, uh, Daniel, uh, go back to, yeah, here. Woman, woman, you know, Hong Kong, uh, just a girl, a woman, uh, you go to Hong Kong, so the one just you go 课程开发部分的这个丹尼尔用了一个这个脚手架来比喻就是不管你在任何一个程度目前我们学生在任何一个程度实际上我们都是想办法给你搭建一个梯子那你沿着这个梯子你可以上到一个更高的一个程度所以
啊，但是大家大家觉得可能是说有很多很多科目这个很难，但是英文，大家总是觉得这个不是我每天都在讲的吗？我每天都在说的，我每天都在读的吗？我每天都在用的吗？有那么复杂的这个内容吗？其实其实有，英文其实是说不光是英文了，其实所有的语言都一样，中文也是如此，法语也是如此，法文也是如此啊，其实都是我们尽可能的在教学当中。把这些很复杂的内容能够给大家拆解开，给大家拆解开啊，这样的话能够让它达到刚才我们说的每一节课我们的这种教学的要求，我们的教学的目标啊。Yeah, next one, Daniel. Thank you. 这个是一个呃很有名的一个结构啊，叫 Bloom's 呃 Taxonomy 啊，这个是很有名的一个一个一个这种。呃，教学或者说是学习的一个结构，它分为呃叫 creating， 就是说你要先创建，然后 evaluating 是评估 ，analyzing 是分析，然后 applying 是真正的去去试用它啊 ，understanding 当然就是我怎么去理解 ，remembering 就是要把它把它记住。所以，呃，我们在整个的课程设计当中，也是贯穿着这个 Bloom's taxonomy 的这这样的一个结构了。所以 Daniel。他在做这种 curriculum development、curriculum design 的时候，也是要把刚才这几个结构，要把它全部贯穿到我们的课程当中。OK， Daniel。Hey， thank you， Henry。OK， so um the next part is kind of just like a scoping sequence as to maybe like what does it look like um in terms of like lessons. So once again, I'll just be using grade eight um as as an example um. So here, here we have kind of like month of September, um, and just kind of what to expect um, as, as to like how our lessons are structured and, and where we develop. Um, so I'll, I'll cover these things. Maybe um, I'll, I'll repeat kind of these things down the road as well. So I won't go through too much in detail. But um, for lessons, um, I just want to mention that they are all standardized, right? So within each grade level, uh, which um, and of course each um, depending on what classes they're in. Um, it's all standardized uh, to facilitate kind of like a smooth progression of acquiring these skills and acquiring this knowledge, right? So we'll always have kind of like a worthy wise section, and we'll go over our resources of maybe why we chose this. Um, we'll hit writing and literature and so forth, right? And so we'll consistently have these three parts in our lessons um, to really help gather different parts of English proficiency, right? So there'll be vocabulary, writing, um, of course, um, analyzing literature. Um, I also want to make a quick mention, right? Um, so um, I also highlight the top here. So this would be kind of like for our fall semester. Um, Hi, Diana. We'll be going through kind of our short stories Diana, you're, and then we'll be you're doing our you're novels as well. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but um, we'll be doing our, our novels. Um, but our novels are actually chosen uh, specifically from um, also from other top um, private schools in the Greater Toronto area. So um, we really um, intentionally designed it in this way to really help enrich um, students that will be joining us at Linky. So this is just really a really quick scoping sequence for like the month of September. Um, and moving on as well, right? Just to really um, hammer this down, right? So with our three parts, right? There's, so we'll be hitting these three parts consistently throughout these 32 lessons, as in like a fall semester, 16 classes in a fall semester, and 16 classes in a winter semester. Um, and of course, they, they both are related, right? So it'll be like one full year with uh, school year with us. Um, for the vocabulary, um, we, we are focusing on the retention um, of vocabulary, so not just like memorizing a lesson and then forgetting about it next week, right? But actually using it and utilizing it um, throughout. Um, with writing, um, we're also be hitting with writing for the, for um, grades five to eight. We'll have a heavy focus towards like grammar and sentence structure. We really want to be able to build those foundational skills um, before they hit high school, um, and so we'll be using specific exercises to really hammer down really just grammar and sentence structure. Um, and just kind of like a well-intentioned use um, of like, when do I use specific, we're not just, for example, we're not just learning about, oh, is this a, a sentence like a simple sentence or a complex sentence or a compound sentence, right? Um, we also wanna go into like why or when do we use certain things, right? 
So we want to be using grammar and sentence structures as tools to kind of elevate the writing in that sense. Um, and of course, in our high school, um, we have grade nine and grade 10. Uh, we're going to be focusing on essays or different types of essays. Um, specifically, we're going to be using um, New York Times mentor texts uh, to kind of guide our writing. Um, and, and for this one, this is enriching um, the Ontario curriculum, mainly because a lot of times, for example, in grade nine, they might be introduced to maybe persuasive writing or um, maybe a critical review um, or literature review of a specific text, right? And then there's this particular structure that um, teachers might want them to follow, and then they're done. Um, but really for our intent, uh, we take that from what they learn in school, but we also want to ask the questions of why or the style of writing. How, how can it reach my audience? Um, how will my audience receive it, right? So we want to be taking a step forward um, and being just more intentional with how we communicate in terms of written form. Um, our last one is our literature. So you'll notice how um, there's the short stories, novels, poetry, Shakespeare, and, and plays and so forth. Um, and this hits actually throughout our curriculum, um, usually throughout um, a school year, um, even in your sons and daughters classes, they would hit these different types of, um, of, of, of media or different texts, right? Um, all year round. We'll be doing the same here at Linky as well. Um, but of course, um, looking at the image on the right, right? Our goal in using the, the this is content, right? Our, our focus is, is on content here. But our other focus is once again on skills, right? We're using this content in order to facilitate once again growth, transferable skills, so that when they take it back to their classrooms, right, they can actually apply it, um, and of course be more successful in their in their classes as well. Um, so that's really what we really want to share about scope and sequence. Um, maybe I'll let Henry um, talk a little bit before I share an example lesson. Sure. Thanks, Daniel. Um, 我们谈一下这个, 这个scope, 就是, 就是到底我们, uh, 要, 要, uh, 所有的教学, 教研内容里面, 到底是要, uh, 里面都有哪些内容, 我们的范围是什么。其实Daniel刚才自己在, 他在讲的时候, 他在不停的在问一个问题, 就是说, 呃, 当然我们希望大家到, 听到目前为止, 大家能够意识到, 能够, 呃, 一下子能够感受到 我们在不停给大家传递的一个信息 就是英文, 英文的重要性, 就是它不仅仅是一门课, 它是一个, 一个水平的transferable的一个能力 如果我们的这种常规学，呃，我们的全日制学校里面给的东西，给的资源不够的话，那到底我们应该怎么做？到底怎么样才能够真正真正帮到学生啊？所以我们现在就是，呃，讲一些很具体的东西了，包括我们的
第一大部分是我们引用了这个 World w i d e Three Thousand， 这是一个目前呃所有人应该说都呃很熟悉的一套这个词汇教材。我们把这这个教材引入进来，那它只是就是词汇部分啊。那么另外第二部分就是 writing， 就是写作。尤其到了九年级之后，你的英文课内成绩有很大一部分是是写作部分啊。那当然，写作对你将来的这种申请文书的帮助，你这种论文的帮助等等，这个不言而喻了，就不多啰嗦了。大家都应该能够知道它的重要性。第三大部分实际上就是英文文学啊，就是 leadership， 因为 leadership 部分其实是蛮蛮有挑战的啊，包括刚才说的一些文文学分析，像莎士比亚这些古典英文，其实对孩子们来说都挑战性都蛮大啊，所以基本上这是我们的啊三大部分。那大家可以看到，比如说我们第一节课是我们的 World w i d e Three Thousand 啊，第八章的第一节课 Lesson One Introduction。呃，然后这个 section section A B C， 然后 writing， 啊，我们用的是 language power exercise， 这是另外一套书，这套书一会儿 Daniel 会讲啊，我现在先先这个先不说，等一下 Daniel 他会讲到这个地方啊 ，language power， 然后 literature， 啊，我们用什么？我们用刚才讲的叫呃 three Christ， 呃 introduction 这个呃作者介绍，然后。等等，后面是是另外一本书哈、啊，《Dark Day War》，我就这个不啰嗦了啊。Uh, Daniel， let's go to the next page。所以刚才我们讲了三大部分哈、啊、，vocabulary 就是词汇部分，用 World w i d e Three Thousand， 呃，这个写作部分啊，写作部分其实里面也已经包括词汇，包括这个这个句型结构，呃、啊、，essay 文书部分，然后这个呃，《纽约时报》的一些内容。啊，然后我们是我们的呃英文文学部分，这个里面，英文文学部分其实包括像短篇、像小说、像呃诗歌和莎士比亚戏剧，这个都是英文文学的组成部分。OK， back to you, Daniel. Okay, thank you, Henry. Um, yeah, so、I、really just want to emphasize that、uh, we do follow a very、um, structured approach,、um, and really using these three parts consistently. So、um, I'm gonna quickly share another screen here, just to give you maybe like a, a glimpse、um, of、uh, kind of a lesson、um, that we might use. So I'm gonna switch my screen here. So hopefully you are able to see that.、Um, so using the same lesson. So this is the same example that I've been using just for consistency here.、Um, this is our grade eight lesson one, right?、Um, as you can see,、um, we kind of went through a couple of These things already. So with each lesson, so this is just one of the many lessons, right? We do have, like,、uh, for example, what Ontario curriculums are recovering in terms of one year ahead.、Um, I'm going to scroll down slowly. Okay,、uh, we do have our learning objectives as kind of what I shared also in the previous slide,、um, as to like this is our goal for all students to achieve by the end of this lesson, right? And to of course then they take it home and practice, right? Um, but scrolling down to maybe the more important part. So、um, our lessons are are very structured in a way. So maybe we'll go through a couple of things here.、Um, so our focus is on skills, right? So for example, when we do take the worthy wise, right? Many of you might be、um, familiar with the worthy wise, right? But we're using it in a slightly different way as well.、Um, so for example, when we take the vocabulary, our our emphasis is at least for the grade eights and six and sevens as well. Uh, we want to focus on paraphrasing, right? So, in addition to using the worthy wise, right, our skill here is to、uh, practice paraphrasing. Can they actually put the meaning into their own words, right? Can they actually use it? Can they explain it? And so,、um, we would also make this very clear for parents as well, because as much as、um, we would like to, of course, instill this in them.、Um, as parents, right, you can also ask your child, maybe like after after class, hey. Um, can you paraphrase this for me, right? And they also would have another opportunity to, of course, explain it and to solidify their understanding, right? So when we use in the worthy wise, right, we're also practicing these skills. So like paraphrasing here.、Um, so for grade eight, we would start off the lesson with actually, well,、um, there's different ways we can paraphrase, right? We can reward, rearrange, realize, and review, and we'll practice the skill. We'll introduce it,、um, and of course, as we get to maybe like 
the later lessons of the semester, they will be proficient at their level in paraphrasing this successfully. Um, um, later on, if we scroll down a little bit more, um, we yes, we will be using language power. We'll, we'll look at the exercise. I'll show you kind of the book cover and why we're choosing it later on. Um, but I'll also maybe point that we do want to incorporate contests in in in, in our lessons, right? So, for example, um, in my own students, in my own uh, class, has they have participated in this contest before, and there's just a sense of using real life contests in a lesson to once again provide students a way to demonstrate what they what they know. Um, and also it gives them some sort of a, a real world kind of application, right? So it's, it's really goal oriented, goal focused. And of course, at the end, they also get to see the results, right? And, and it really creates this um, intrinsic motivation within them to learn, to see that, oh, what I'm learning is actually applicable and there's some um, use of it as well, right? So we want to make sure our writing is also relevant to our students here. Um, and so for, for example, for the month of September, in addition to language power, right, um, we would be encouraging students to participate in, for example, color expressions um, to submit their short stories, right? Um, if you remember in our scope of sequence, there's like many short stories. So as we're reading short stories, we also want to encourage students as in, okay, what can we take from these short stories and how can I kind of apply them to my own skill set, right? So it really provides them an opportunity uh, to learn these things. Um, I really want to highlight this part of the lesson as well because uh, all the worthy wise writing and literature, they seem like kind of three separate sections. We do try to integrate them as much as possible um, to really make it flow, right? At the end of the day, English isn't compartmentalized into like reading and vocabulary and writing differently, right? We use them together, right? So we really, really want to um, have this approach in terms of lessons as well. Um, and of course, lastly, we do have our literature section. Um, and um, we want to, for example, the three quests of reading would be like, how do can we read a story effectively? Right? This would be a tool that they could use in their own schools, right? So even if their teachers don't do this with them, right, they can do this themselves, right? So hopefully they can hopefully use this approach to understand um, what they're reading in a better sense. Of course, make better connections as well. Um, so we always have a literature part here as well. Um, and then following at the end of each lesson, we do really want to have a consolidation uh, kind of section as well. Um, and so our teachers here um, would be trained to also use these kind of strategies to really help solidify other lessons. And of course, we encourage you as parents, um, at the end of any lesson, actually, you should always ask your, your child, right, what did they learn, right? Just the question, and for them to explain it to you, really helps them solidify the connections they've just made in the past two hours, right? Um, so regardless, we should um, always be practicing this, right? So we want to integrate this approach into every single lesson because our focus is not just, oh, here's just a week and, and I'm done with it, right? We want to focus on retention. Um, so this is just like a quick overview um, of our, just kind of like one lesson in terms of our in, in link key. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to say anything at this point or I can move on to. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do a real quick one. Um, can you score uh, uh, 能够你学到的这些，不管是词汇也好，还是刚才我们讲的这些文学也好，我们怎么样去用到它啊？所以呃，语言一定是要在用的过程当中学，当中学，在学的过程当中用。所以呃，这个地方我们这个Daniel讲
用另外一个词汇来代替 rearrange 啊，把它重新排下去 realize 就是我们真正去去理解它，然后 review 就是怎么样去复习它啊。所以这是我们的第一部分，就是啊 ，Worldy by Three Thousand 这个这本书应该大家都很熟啊，很非常非常有名的一个一一本词汇的书。OK 啊、uh, ，scroll down please。那我们的第二部分，实际上就是我们的 writing 部分。writing 部分，呃，这个地方我想强调一点，就是我们的新的英语课程的设计，呃，我们的英语课程的开发，我们会非常紧密的结合竞赛，就是不仅仅是我们能够提高孩子的整个的英语水平，提高他的在校成绩，呃，同时我们会把竞赛给他融合进来，就大家可以去参加英文竞赛。啊，写作竞赛等等这些啊啊，那这个地方其实丹尼尔有讲到，像像 short story contest 啊，这个短篇短篇文章竞呃短短篇写作竞赛，包括刚才我们提到的 New York Times <笑>、纽约时报的写作竞赛等等，所以这是 writing 部分。然后最后一部分 literature 部分，我们大概目前计划是是四十分钟啊啊 ，scroll down a bit more， thank you。啊，我就不再重复了啊，因为其实丹尼尔都有讲过了，我就用用中文给大家再再这个快速的 recap 一下啊，呀、uh, yeah, ，further down， all right， 最后十分钟实际上是我们的呃，最后把整个这一节课的内容，我们三个部分的内容，最后把它这个整理总结在一起，然后把它 consolidate 在一起啊，我们也很建议大家就是说。那让孩子去做这种练习，就是今天学完之后两个两个小时的一节课之后，你能不能用一句话能把我这节课的内容最主要的，你认为最重要的内容用一句话把它总结出来啊？或者说你能不能给我啊，告诉我三件事最呃、啊、这个这三哪三个事情是你认为这节课对你来说帮助最大最重要啊？我们可以通过这种练习。呃，让孩子真正的去，呃，不仅仅是在学习，而同时是在融会贯通啊，把它消化，然后真正的把这些变成他自己的一部分。Okay, back to back to you, Daniel. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Henry. Okay, so we're going to go through our kind of last section here, um, and this is just the resources, uh, as to why we've chosen what we've chosen. Um, so I think um, as Henry mentioned before, like uh, Worthy Wise is very famous. Um, so another reason why we use this is the word 3000, I'm not sure, is because there's just, we learned that 3000 words are most likely to appear in textbooks, state and national assessments. So um, it's very practical in that sense. Um, I won't go to, too much into this one. Um, we're also using language power. Um, language power is actually utilized by um, also many top private schools as well. Um, and it's also a really just a really great resource as it builds and reinforces a solid foundation in sentence structure, grammar and punctuation. Um, the material there actually helps sets up students for um, to be able to write uh, uh, in, 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 in a more intentional way um, at higher levels as well. So that's why we also chose language power. Um, we'll be using mainly this for grades five to eight, though. Um, and the last resource is a lot of books. So these are just our main text. Um, there's other texts that we'll be using. Uh, for example, all the short stories I didn't include here because they'll just take up the whole screen here. Um, but in, the, in addition to main text, we also will have paired readings as well. Um, but those, of course, will be optional for students to pre-use at their, at their leisure, or if, of course, if parents mandate for their own students. Um, but these are our core texts. Um, and, and, and we mentioned this already before, but the, these are the kind of the main literature pieces um, that are also part of the top private schools in the GTA region. Um, they also help um, with our kind of year ahead enrichment as well. Um, so yeah. Um, for our grades five to, um, so our grades five to 10, we'll be reading these parts, uh, using this as content. But more than that, right? It's not just about, can I read this novel, right? But it's more of, can I analyze and use this novel, um, use this novel as a way for analysis, right? Our focus is on transferable skills. Um, so I'm just gonna maybe quickly go through here. Um, our focus is also, once again, goal-oriented. So these are just a few of our contests that we will be using as our, once again, resources as well. Um, the top one, as mentioned before, is New York Times. 
they do have um, contests actually year round, right? So we'll be trying to kind of follow their cycle through their different genres of writing. Um, and of course, students can, of course, participate in the contest as also kind of like motivation to apply what they've learned. Uh, and as mentioned before, Polar Expressions is, uh, is at the bottom there. Um, so as, as you can see, right, the deadline is November and that will be our goal. Right? Our goal will be September and October will be um, practice and writing are going through our revision process. And then, of course, we will submit our um, short stories um, to the contest um, actually very soon. Um, so that would be our goal oriented ones. Um, yeah, so that I think that concludes the last section before questions. Maybe, Henry, if you want to um, speak a few words before that. Sure. Sure, sure. Really quickly, um, can you um, turn back a few pages uh, here? There, yes. We, uh, 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 成熟的一个组合的一个这个词汇的书了 当我们过渡到高中，过渡到从language过渡到literature的时候，那很多孩子是不适应。啊，原因就是因为他在八年级之前的language部分，其实他的很多基础是有有缺失。啊，所以我们就给大家在八年级之前，那这本书language power它就是
，呃，帮助他去参加竞赛，获得更好的这种竞赛成绩，好吗？那这个内容就是今天主要呃，戴尼尔讲的主要的内容，我们贯穿着我们新的呃英语的教学大纲，包括我们的所有的这种呃理念，我们的思路方向啊，今天。呃，很简短，但是内容非常多，不可能在一个小时讲完啊。但这个所有的重点部分，我们今天都跟大家讲到啊。啊、呃，所以我们现在留一点点时间给大家问问题。呃 ，Daniel， let's go to the Q&A。啊， sure。Um, right. So the first question: Do we need to buy these books? Uh, you you want me to take this one? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll first speak in English and then in Chinese. So you don't have to buy. You don't have to buy all of them. Uh, if you do, we will let you know. Uh, 那我们通常来讲呢，就是有些书，呃，我们会建议大家买。那如果是需要买的话，我们会老师会告诉你。但很多很多书，大部分书可能你不需要买，我们可能会给孩子们这种复印呐、啊，或者有一些电电子版啊。呃，所以你不用现在就去买。你上了我们的课之后，如果需要的话，我会告诉你。呃、uh, ，Second question: Green Nine course selection. I don't, I don't really understand what what this question is about. What about you, Daniel? Do you know what they're trying to?、Um, no, I mean, if if、um, maybe more elaboration for the question. Yeah, 你能把你的问题再说的更清楚一点吗？呃、uh, ，H H， 呃、uh, ，你想问什么？ What do you really want to ask? Green Green Line Course Selection.、Um, maybe you can, you know, try to elaborate your question a bit more. Ah, we 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 down down. Ah, will the student attend writing contest? Yes, yes. How did your student perform in the writing contest? Ah,、uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, for、uh, for New York Times, we can send you some、uh, some report、uh, for the past student、uh, you know contest performance. Okay. Next question: Do you organize students to can to attend this contest, or the student need to join this contest by themselves? I would say both. Some contests we organize students to go attend and compete. Some students we share information, and students can go、uh, compete by themselves, right?、Uh, but the one、uh, Daniel listed、uh, on the slide, the New York Times and the Polar,、uh, those two I think we will organize. Could you please show time schedule for the course?、Uh, yeah, I can quickly show the schedule. You mean the、uh, the English course, right? I think the best way to do this is to go on our website. I'll, I'll type it up. Everything is on the website, linky-online.com.、Um, you will be able to see everything: all the course schedule,、um, the time,、uh, the teacher, teachers' introductions. Everything is it's online. Okay.、Um, we encourage encourage everyone to.、Uh, Uh, make a good use of our website, which is、uh, basically our course management system. 好吗？大家到我们的网站上，也所有的这些课程信息都在网站上。因为这个，呃，一句话说不清楚啊。就是我们呃，主要的两个校区，一个是密西沙加校区，一个是北约克校区，和我们的线上部分啊，我们的英语课都有安排，所以大家可以到我们的。网站啊，看哪个校区，哪个是呃最合适你的时间啊，包括地理位置离你最方便啊，或者是要不要上线上部分等等啊，你的网站都可以看到，好吗？秋季报名，我们建议大家这个尽量呃早一点啊，因为可能现在好像还有一些早鸟优惠，呃，这个之后可能就是就是呃这个报名很快就会结束哈、啊。OK， 呃。Green Eye, which level should attend your course level? Green Eye English first time attend your course. So if you are going to Green Eye,、uh, Daniel, correct me if I'm wrong. If the student goes to Green Eye in September, 
Um, I think you should just attend our grade nine course, which That's we correct. will basically teach grade ten stuff. Am I right, Jenny? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question from JS. Do the student get homework after each class? Will the teacher check homework and provide written feedbacks? I think students will receive homework. Uh, Sometimes the homework is on Worldly Y3000, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a workbook, right? Sometimes maybe, a, you know, homework uh, is uh, designed by the, by the teacher. Uh, the teacher will try uh, their best to check the homework. Uh, we don't... I don't want to say, you know, the teacher will provide uh, written feedback every single time, right? It, you know, but we do ask the, the teacher to provide written uh, feedbacks uh, from time to time, but may not be every single one. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, there's no online uh, lesson option for under grade 11. Yeah. The reason being is that for for younger students, right? We we find that you know in person classes are more much more effective and efficient uh, because they're they're too young. Um, they don't normally manage themselves very well, right? If they just do do the uh, do the classes online, right? They, they can easily get distracted. Uh, I wouldn't personally recommend younger students taking online classes. Uh, that's why when we, uh, you know, set up the uh, the class schedule, we purposely set up online classes only for older students. Okay. Anything you want to add, Daniel, or correct me? Uh, no, no, that was great. Okay. 还有其他问题吗? 我们... Uh, okay, we'll take one more. We'll take one more question. If going to grade 11, September, grade 11 will be teaching grade 12. Will that help grade 11 English in the school? Daniel, do you want to take this one? Sure, of course. Um, so the great thing about English is that um, grade 11 and grade 12 English, they're not um, completely separate from each other, right? Um, there will be a lot of overlap. So for example, in grade 12, there usually is a play of some sort. Um, they will still analyze rhetoric in some sort as well. Um, so there, there are a lot of overlap. It's just that, for example, in the expectations, um, there would be a challenge, um, but yes, it would still help. For example, the same analytical skills would still help um, a great 11 English in school. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the uh, the ENG three U and ENG four U, like Daniel mentioned, right? Both are uh, two pretty important uh, courses, and there are a lot of common uh, elements uh, shared between the two. Um, by learning grade uh, grade grade uh, twelve stuff, well, certainly help you know your your grade eleven school grade. Okay, um, I think we're, we're going to uh, wrap this up. Uh, you know, thank you everybody uh, for uh, for taking your time. Oh, there's a one more uh, one more question. Uh, leaders who are writing, which one should be the first? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. In um, in Mississauga, there's still literature, there's still writing, uh, but North York, you know, we basically we, we merge the two into one. Um, if you want to choose between one, between leaders and writing, I will say this: right? if your your child is pretty good at their school English, I would say take our writing course. If they are not, you know, that well at school, um, you know, uh, their 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 English at their full time school, I would I would recommend uh, that the student take literature. All right. So depends on you know how they do at, at their school. Uh, if they do really well, they they, they can take our writing uh, program. Um, otherwise, I would recommend uh, literature. Okay.
So yeah, you know, uh, once again, I wanna I wanna thank you. Uh, I wanna thank Daniel for uh, all the efforts uh, he put in, right? Uh, by using his, uh, you know, basically a summer break. Uh, he really put in a lot of effort in the uh, in the curriculum, you know, design and the development. Um, you know, also as well as prepping uh, for for this seminar. Uh, so yeah, big big uh, thank you for for Daniel. Uh, I also want to thank everybody else uh, for spending your time uh, tonight with us. Uh,我们今天就就呃暂时到这里，好吧？我我想感谢Daniel啊，花了他基本上他整个的夏天的这个这个呃假期啊，都用来帮我们做所有的这些课程课程研发工作课程设计啊。啊，那么也感谢今天